Hey y'all, I've been working on my own hobby programming language called Rio. It compiles from source text like this to WebAssembly or WASM. It's not useful for anything yet, but maybe it will be someday. And one of my goals is to have this compile very fast, as well as just have some fun with the language. And one of the things I noticed recently is that even though I haven't implemented loops, I can do recursion already, including mutual recursion. So for example, I count down from three, and then I print whether something's odd or even. And I don't actually have string formatting at all, so this is fairly simple right now. I print counting, and I print done if I ran out of my count. For the oddness, I print even if it's even, and odd otherwise. And these bounce back and forth between each other. A really inefficient way to calculate if a number is even or odd. But it's something that works already with my current language features. Let's run it. Where here I have built it with Rio into a particular out directory. And then I'm running it with WASMI CLI. Where I see counting, 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 done. That's the base case of my recursion here. Then for my mutually recursive, I get that 3 is odd and one more than three is even. Yay. Or if I change it to four here, go again, now I get countdown four times. And I was noticing for my type inference that if I get rid of one of these mutually recursive functions where is even calls is odd and vice versa, everything still works. But if I get rid of my return type for both of them, I can no longer infer the type correctly. And reminder here that I still don't actually have error reporting for my language. So I don't give an error here, but I fail to produce valid wasm in my output if I don't have the type inferred correctly. So let's put those back. And move on to the real star for the day, which is struct. So I've got structs and or records. Sort of biased towards saying struct still right now. And I have a smorgasbord of syntax examples here. But first, let's run this example. By the way, if you notice here, this is the compiling time of me going from Rio source to a WASM output. And this is the time to execute the WASM output with WASMI. That's only an interpreter, but it has very low startup time. So for quickly running programs like this, it's actually faster than using something that compiles before running. In any case, we see here that all definitions in Rio are just using equals. It's not an assignment, it's a definition. So I've defined name Alice then used field shorthand syntax, AKA punning, to assign the name and the age to Alice, where person is a struct of name and age. I could have said name equals name for the same effect. Notice here the curly braces for struct instances as opposed to the parens for normal function parameters. We're gonna look at this a little bit more here. I call describe four times for four different people. One, two, three, four. Alice, Bob, Carl, and Denise who are age 40, 40, 10, and nine. And here's passing in Alice as a simple argument. Or I can pass in a new struct instance where I've inferred the type for this struct instance because describe needs to receive a person. And all my function calls are either with or without parents. So in this case, I'm basically passing in my first argument without parents and as a struct instead. I'm not quite sure if I like doing it this way or not in terms of style, but the gist is that passing in named args is about as simple as passing in positional args. You just pass in a struct or you pass in positional things. My inclination is that you ought to have very few positional args in Rio. If you want to have more elaborate things to receive, then you're going to be passing in structs, which is no extra syntactic overhead versus what named args might've been in the first place. And furthermore, notice here, that I have what I call deep punning. Or in other words, when I say alice.age, that's the same thing as saying age equals alice.age, because I figure that's an easy way to weave data around between struct instances. And if you want to build a struct with positional args, you just make a helper function that has positional args and then build your struct for you. So in this case, I'm building a struct instance and passing it into describe. And then finally, this is yet another different version of syntax that's equivalent to curly braces. And I did this because when I'm building out blocks of things, I like them to look like blocks instead of looking like punctuation. So presumably we could do something like this and it would still work. Just to prove we're actually getting new versions of the code here though. Now we see it says Dan because I changed the name from Dan up here. 
The same thing applies down here for the struct definition. This is actually a call to a built-in function called struct. And this built-in function sort of has mm, macro-esque handling internally. Instead of actually using it as a function call, during the processing, I recognize references to it and take the struct that was here, which yes, again, could use curly braces, and change this from a struct instance into a struct definition, which then gets referenced by the name person. So basically, I have a variety of powerful prepositions that get parsed and handled specially, where of is one of those, b is another one, which gives you a single value afterward, which could be this single value, or it could be a whole block that runs with a single values at the end, including if that's a void slash unit value. And finally, I have more loosely binding with preposition that turns all this into a list of things, which in the case of branch is handled in a macro-esque fashion as well, that turns that into branching. Now, this doesn't work, print branch with, because it sees branch as a separate argument from the with list. So we try running this, presumably we get bad stuff happen. Yeah, failed to parse and validate wasm, because even though I don't do a great job of error reporting, I still generate bad wasm when you give bad code. Error reporting is a thing to do in the future. So that's a quick review of what it looks like to use structs in Rio, which sort of give you automatically the idea of named args. So let's take a quick look also at what it seems like inside the compiler when handling these things. I'm not gonna show the actual compiler code today, in part because it's just ugly. So let's hide that for a bit and see some comparisons at different compiler stages. So first we have the raw parse tree, which has every bit of text from the source code. And here's that example of seeing alice.age comma name equals something. alice.age name equals something, I guess is Bob. And how when I go from the raw parse tree to the abstract syntax tree, or which I call norm, norming the tree, that's the point at which I see, oh, you didn't have a name for this field, but using the dot syntax, I'm gonna pull the word age out and presume that's the name you wanted to assign. So on average, the tree's a lot smaller, but sometimes it gets a little bit bigger with the extra stuff fit in here. So this is before any kind of serious semantic analysis at all. And let's look a little bit at the next stage on things. So we go, for example, from person equals struct name text age at 32, that's this down here, from the normalized or abstract syntax tree. And then over here on the other side, we see after some analysis, where I've resolved struct to being a call to that built-in macro. And I've changed this from being a struct instance to saying, oh, this is a struct definition. Notice I have a slot here for default values, which I don't do anything with yet right now. And then references to struct instances, like for example, in that build function, which creates a person struct instance from positional parameters. Here's those positional parameters, the return type, and then the struct instance, which no longer says struct def. And I've resolved name as being the first field in that struct and age as being the second one in that struct with the whole zero based indexing. So it gets a feel for what kind of things are going on here in terms of internal representations. And then I go from this representation into wasm generation. So for example, right here, we see that build function and I have to do quite a bit of gymnastics on value handling, in part because all of my strings are still two values. One is the length of the string and the other is the address of it in memory. Whereas for structs themselves, I only pass them around as a pointer. So for example, this build function, which again receives text and int32 and returns a person, over here has four parameters because the first one is the return address for where it's gonna fill in the struct data. The next two are the length and address of the text. And the last one is that age integer. And in my very simplified code generation, if I see I have a struct of size 12, I have to put some space on the memory that I'm using a stack and then keep track of the address of it, including other fields inside of it in order to store the parts of the text string as well as whatever age was passed in. And then when I'm done, I've got to copy that data back out into that parameter zero where I'm doing the return data of the struct. And where this is being called right here, I have to provide space on the stack and pass that memory address in to the build thing. 
So this is the kind of juggling I'm doing to get the data moving around. Or in other words, as you see here, my structs in Rio are expanded value types as opposed to being reference types. Although whenever I'm passing things around, I'm passing around their address. And I currently don't have memory allocation in Rio. When I do do that, I plan to have some opportunities for, you know, quote unquote heap allocation. But structs themselves, I still expect to be values expanded in whatever location they're being stored at. In this case, on my stack. Anyway, quick update on my hobby language. After a little more work on it, maybe it'll even be useful for something. If you like the video, be sure to subscribe. Bye, y'all.